we are back live with Mackenzie Westmore, host of Sci-Fi's Face Off. <laughs> okay, before we went to break, I was mentioning about how I want to ask you about do the judges disagree. Three great judges, very credentialed, talked about it briefly in the first segment, but unlike other competition reality shows, it, it seems like in the episodes I've watched, they always kind of seem to agree. Are they that agreeable? Not you know, always. on the stuff that we don't see? Not always, no. I mean, for the most part, yes, they, they do agree. Mm -hmm. um, but there have been a couple of times where, you know, some of our judges have really taken a stand on, no, that wasn't that great, or I really liked that for this particular reason. But at the end of the day, it really does come down to, and this is where they do end up all agreeing, it comes down to what was the challenge, how closely did they execute their makeup to the best of their ability and follow the rules of what I've given them. So at the end of every episode, that's what it boils down to. So is there ever any uh, situation off camera where they were really having a difficult time deciding on who to vote off? Oh, yes. Off? Yeah. Oh, season one, absolutely off camera. I think we were backstage for like 45 minutes, I want to say. I, I, I could be wrong on that, but if, I, at least it felt like 45 minutes to an hour okay. <laughs> that we were backstage. I remember as it got closer to the end of season one, they were trying to really lock down one of the, the, the winner and the, the, the mm -hmm. person being eliminated that night. And... Uh, I remember they were having a tough time because there were some really good makeups towards the end of season one, just like season two. You know, as everybody saw tonight and on, you know, the, the West Coast we'll be seeing. <laughs> That's right. A few minutes after film that uh, on the West Coast, you can tune in uh, 10 o'clock Sci-Fi Channel to mm -hmm. catch the second to last episode of the season. Exactly. I thought uh, LeVar Burton, I'm a Star Trek fan, he was a great guest judge. And, he uh, was. He really tried to have a, a teaching moment with Jerry that I didn't think was too receptive of it. Um, I think he was, Jerry was defending one, his choice for in a specific episode and he was talking about the colors he used and, yeah. and LeVar was talking about how it seemed water-based when he was trying to create an alien, I think. And Jerry just like, like cut him off and was like, you know, well, I, I don't want to make like the regular choices. You know, I want to do my own individual choices. And LeVar's point was, um, you, you have you to- You see water, you, you think blue. Right, you have you to take- sky, in, you think You have yeah. to keep in mind the, the frame of reference of your audience. Right. You're, you're not working in a world of one. You right. know, if you are, be a poet and speak right, spoken right, word right. poetry. You know, these people are a crew, they're part of a team, chemistry, originality, you talk right. about those things, but it has to work within the context of, of, the, t of the total piece right. that you're creating, right? Exactly. And I felt like Jerry missed that moment. He did, you know, unfortunately with that, he did miss that moment and, um, you know, like with what you were saying personality-wise, you know, we definitely saw it in season one. Um, you know, with, with Frank, you know, he was having a tough time gelling with some of the other people, but uh, he got it. He understood. You know, af after that, I know he really did understand what it meant to be a part of a team. Because um, that is a big component to special effects makeup. You know, it's, it's not a team of one. You do work with a team of people, and you have to be able to get along and, and understand the, the full aspect of teamwork. Now, and Patrick was a guest judge in an episode. And yes. it doesn't mean the regular judge. He was a guest, and he was the client. Right. right? He was the client. And you have to be able to deliver what the client wants. Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. As, as with his episode, you know, he had his work that he had right. and the contestants had to follow through mm -hmm. of their own idea but giving the client what the client wants. Now, every, everyone's supposed to be neutral. You neutral as the host, the judge is neutral, but does personality weigh into it? Um, I, Ian is such a likable guy. He you is. Know? He's and, so sweet. And, and he's, you know, and he's, I mean, they're all talented. Mm -hmm. um, but, but Jerry seemed to have a little bit of an ego and was always winding up not doing so well in the early episode. He was always in like, like the best and the worst and the worst and one of the three until he finally did get eliminated. Mm -hmm. Does personality weigh? You know, I, it's, it's certainly something that you can't help but notice, but I wouldn't say it's a weighing factor as mm -hmm. to who goes home. It really is, it's based on talent. And I mean, yes, if somebody is, is really having a tough time getting along with everybody, it's going to be difficult. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's the talent. It's, it's a full package. Mm -hmm. It's the talent. It's the teamwork. It's the time. Can they do it in the time that they're given? Um, can they execute all their makeups? Can they apply it properly? Can they cover those edges? You know, and, and creations even. Sometimes just the concept will get the judges more than I know for, for Patrick, it certainly holds true that just the concept and the idea sometimes can hold, hold to be stronger than the that full-on um, application. Not true, because Becky also has a healthy opinion of herself, but <laughs> she advanced quite easily and nicely through most of the yes, rounds, yeah. right? I mean, whereas Jerry, healthy opinion, but was seemed to be on the bottom rung most of the time. So yeah. you have two different examples. One was thriving more than the other. Right, you know, right. Was there anyone in particular that was hard for you to see go? 
Absolutely. Tara actually was really hard for me to see go. I, she was just so sweet and such a, such a lovely, lovely woman. And I, I just, uh, you know, I, I grow close to all of them. So it's always hard to see anybody go. Um, but it was tough to see Tara go, and she's very talented. And to be honest with you, I know Nick's through Jerry under the bus. <laughs> I know we talked about that. <laughs> but I really, I was really wanting to see Nick's through the, the body painting challenge. So I was disappointed that he went home before that challenge. Because least. he was known, there are different skills involved in being yes. a makeup artist effects, and body painting is one of them. That was were... his, his like known skill. He and Athena were known for their body painting. So, I, you know, and I've been following him now on Facebook to, to see what, what he's doing. And um, that's, you know, I was disappointed that he didn't get to be a part of that one. So a little back talk before the show, you know, we talk and get to know <laughs> each other. And I have to give uh, Jerry credit because I was just talking about his healthy opinion of himself. There was that one challenge where they worked together and um, it didn't go so well. And they're before the judges and, and Nick's basically... You know, threw Jerry under the bus, which yeah. I didn't think was cool. No, and, and it wasn't. Jerry was very cool in that particular instance, where um, given the same opportunity, he says, "I'm not going to do that." We were a team, and it was both of us. So right. I give Jerry a lot of credit for how he handled himself in that situation. But yeah, no, Nick's was cool. I, look, he the, was. Yeah, it, I know. It, I just was like I said, I was disappointed that I didn't get to see him through to the the body painting. But. You know, well, Nick, you're getting a lot of free publicity. I hope I you know, appreciate I this. I know, I know. But you, you follow his Facebook page, right? I do, and, yes. And you have seen some more of his work since the Yes, yeah. and, and he is a great body painter. Um, and I do. I follow a lot of them, and I like to keep up with a lot of them and, and see how they're doing. Um, I still keep in contact with some of them, even. Uh, I actually had dinner with Gage not oh, too wow. long ago. And my dad just hired him to go do a movie in India. So it's, it's fun to keep in touch with these people, and it's so fun to see them, you know, continuing on in their careers and getting jobs that they may not have gotten in, in another circumstance. Yeah, you know, we this, about at the top. Yeah, this show really, it, it offers that opportunity to do that, and I love that. So it's, I kind of feel like the, the mother hen in mm -hmm. some ways, you know, because I'm, I'm seeing them through all these challenges, and I never like to see anybody go. And then, you know, they go off into the world and they get their jobs and it's like, ah, oh, okay, they're, they're good. Well, like uh, Brian might say, golf clap for the Sci-Fi Channel for creating <laughs> yes. these jobs for, um, for, for these talented <laughs> individuals. Uh, back to uh, maybe a technical question, how realistic are the time frames that your contestants are given for these challenges compared to what they would have on a set? Oh my goodness, they, they're not realistic at all. That's I mean, right. they're, <laughs> I mean, we are reality, but really. Yeah. Uh, the time frames that they're given are insane, but they're able to, to make it happen and they make it work. Um, you know, I, I remember even my dad when he came on and he was saying, my goodness, to see the aliens that, that they made in that time frame, he said that would, that would take a week. Typically you'd be given a week to do something like what they did. Um, a lot of them, you know, sometimes they're not camera ready, but they're good enough to get mm -hmm. through a challenge. And then sometimes they just blow us out of the water. And they're, they're I mean, you could turn a camera on and throw that, that actor model in a scene right then and there. So aliens, um, monsters, demons, what else have they created? What? Oh, my goodness. Yes, we had the water, the, the uh, fish. Uh -huh. uh, tonight was dinosaurs. Um, what else do we do? Uh, we had the phobias. Yeah, we right, and you get shown pictures. Wizard of Oz. We Wizard of that. Oz. Yes. yes. Now th I'm glad you brought that up. That was uh, in the pilot. Of, yes, or the that first was the first. That was the the first, first episode, episode of season, season two. two. Yes. I asked about the judges. Do you ever disagree with the judges? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I don't get too much of a say, but yeah, I do. Actually, I mean, I'll, I'll pipe up here and there, but for the most part, that's their job, and that's what they're there to do. But there have been one or two times where I'm just like, really? Hmm. But you know, they also get to see a closer look. I, I don't get to go up close mm -hmm. to the makeups, so they do see a little bit more than I do. I mean, I get to watch them backstage um, and get to see it close up on camera. Any disagreement you care to share? Mm, no. No? Okay. <laughs> you want to be hosting for season three, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, it's funny because, you know, you know, with acting, in a technical sense, I can find, uh, I can critique acting in a way that maybe people who haven't studied it can't and so forth. Um, but I can also argue if something's popular and, and people yeah, like something. Exactly. So, like with the Wizard of Oz, like the it was the they did a thing where it was the men against the women. That was the first episode, right. so you had a lot. I thought the the Tin Man for the guys. I got all the critique of the chest, what was going on there. But I actually, I liked the head part. The head was cool. I, I it's just, the head it was, was the hairy cool. metal. You, the, just, you, yeah. can't, you can't get the past hairy metal. Hairy metal. metal. That's right. <laughs> really. <laughs> hairy metal chest. <laughs> That's funny. Well, as we wrap up segment two of the show, uh, what I want to ask you is what we like to ask our guests is, 
This is not a mark, um, a makeup question. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a random, do you have a favorite line in a movie, any movie, and can you say it in the voice of the character in said movie? I do. Um, what, I love comedies. I'm a big, uh, I just, I love any kind of comedy. And this, the, the stupider, the dumber, the better. Uh, one of my favorites, I would say, is Walk Hard, uh, the Dewey Cox story. And I just love when the wife says to him, it's so horrible, it's so funny, where she goes, I do believe in you, honey, but I just know you're going to fail. <laughs> so that, for me, that's my favorite line. <laughs> I do, huh? <laughs> But after your answer, I have to say, are you a, big, are you a fan of the movie Dumb and Dumber? Or oh, my movie? God, yeah, it's one of my favorite yes. movies. So you're saying I have a chance. That, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> well, that is going to do it for this segment. We will be right back with your viewer questions.